Do you believe any attempt by David Cameron to limit the free movement of Labour within the EU is doomed? No, I don't. Depends on what you mean by limiting free movement of Labour. I think our proposal, which is basically rewriting the rules around access to benefits for EU migrants, the brilliance of that proposal is that it would allow free movement to stand. Uh, therefore, it will be negotiable in Europe. Other European leaders might be might be willing to sign up to those changes, but it will also make a material difference at home oh. by, by restricting uh, tax credits in particular, which is a social policy, which is not supposed to be covered by free movement, restricting that to British workers for, for, uh, for, for, for a long period, uh, for EU migrants to have a qualification period to, to qualify for those uh, benefits. And I think that, in my view, strikes the perfect, perfect compromise between uh, making a big difference at home but being achievable abroad. Right. When you say that that policy isn't doomed, can you just clarify for us that you do believe then that David Cameron, putting aside your policy just for the moment, we'll come to it in more detail, in-house benefits, uh, in work I should say, benefits, but in terms of limiting the numbers of migrants from the EU coming to Britain, can he actually do that as it stands at the moment in the current treaty organisation? Uh, I would argue that putting an outright cap on the number of EU migrants who come here uh, will not be compatible with the right. EU membership. And in fact, it will actually be very difficult to pursue that policy outside the European Union as well, because both Norway and Switzerland, which I know is Douglas Carswell's favourite uh, uh, model outside the EU, both are subject to EU free movement rules. So in fact, they actually take in more EU migrants per head than the UK does, uh, ironically. So, so whether inside or outside the EU, I think Britain will live with some sort of a uh, free movement or immigration arrangement with the rest of the European Union. The question is how to manage that in a fair manner, and I think right. that's where our proposal is, comes in. Is it in. fair, though? Is your policy fair if you've got a Polish plumber who is in work in the UK who's paying taxes? Why can't that Polish plumber claim tax credits, for example, just like his or her British counterpart, in the same way a British worker in Spain or Poland would be able to do the same? You know, I don't know exactly what their tax arrangements there, but why would that be fair here? Well, there are a couple of things there. The first one is that in most other countries, uh, there is no similar thing to tax credits. Uh, other countries are much more contribution based. So you don't have this dilemma in the first place. And what we're proposing is to put the British system more in line with a continent continental contribution based system. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, why don't we extend uh, tax credits to migrants from outside the European Union. That will be the logical extension of that argument. Uh, we don't because we think it's right that uh, migrants from outside the EU should be here for a certain period of time to, uh, to contribute and then they will have full access to, to the welfare system. And thirdly and finally, tax credits are not tax policy. They are social policy designed to make work pay for British workers, to make British workers uh, transition into the labour market again. So therefore they are social policy. Free movement was never intended, was never meant to include mutual and unrestricted access to other countries' social policies. So right. that's what we would argue.